EA Sports coverage of the NFL brings us to First Energy Stadium here in Cleveland, Ohio. The folks here in Cleveland, even though all the down years, have never stopped supporting their hometown guys, and we got evidence of that a moment ago as the Browns made their entrance. They are ready to do battle with the Indianapolis Colts. Here's the Browns kicker, Chase McLaughlin, set to go, and we are underway now from Cleveland. Bringing it out of his end zone, Isaiah Rodgers. No run back here on the opening kickoff, as we'll start at the 25. to the drive, picking up 12 yards there and a very quick first down. Well, one unit I know you want to watch is that offensive line. If they keep clearing holes like that, it could be a long night defensively. No doubt about it, because when they are in sync, as we're seeing so far, when that continuity is there, and you can see that they're playing off of each other while controlling the defensive front linebackers, you're exactly right. It could be a very long night for the defense, because someone's going to run for some big yardage. And not a whole lot of room to operate there on the first down run. He gets maybe three. Well, from an offensive perspective, that was a tough run because he only picked up three yards. But let's flip it over to the defensive side. They now have the advantage. Three three-yard gains, that means they're punting the ball likely on fourth down. That's what you're looking for when you're playing defense. From the 40 now on second down, Wentz. It's complete here to T.Y. Hilton. And they're going to have another first down as he's going to be tackled at the Browns' 41-yard line. That was a nicely run slant route. And what the receiver's trying to do is make the defender think he's going upfield for a deeper route and then breaks it off, usually after about three to four steps and cuts towards the middle of the field. And now what he's trying to do is use his body to keep the defender away from the football and get the quarterback a really nice target. And they give him four yards there. It'll be second and six. Well, on every play call, you realize it's not going to go for a touchdown. So a lot of your calls are setting things up for maybe later in the game, trying to establish the inside run, run with toughness now. Hopefully get to the perimeter later, and let's face it, you could do worse than a four-yard run on first down. From the 36, Wentz. Now this will be swung out wide for Taylor. And this time not quite to the 30. It'll be down at the 31-yard line. And they're getting him involved early. You feel like they saw something on tape. Or they just have a sense with him because he's had a good week of practice or something in that area that they want him involved, just as you said. They want him to touch it either in the running game or the passing game, but they must like the matchups they're getting. First and 10, Taylor now. A short gain here, maybe a yard to the 29. But not much on that run, Charles. No, that's exactly the way to execute a run blitz there. They guessed correctly that they would move the ball on the ground, honed in on it, and stopped them. Mark that down for a win in the defense's column. Now it's second and nine. To throw, it's wins. Taken in by the tight end, Doyle. And down inside the 15, shy of the 10. Good job there to locate his tight end, Charles, in the middle of the field. Yeah, he has good pass-catching abilities, and if they're able to continue to find him here in the early going, I think it'll help out his teammates out on the perimeter. You can take the big shots later if he occupies their attention. They'll run on first down. It's Taylor. They'll get this down inside the 10 for a pickup of about three. Brandon, all things considered, they have to feel pretty good about getting that type of a gain considering the blitz that they just had against them. Second and six. No, scratch that. Second and seven. Now wins. This goes out right to Doyle. 
That catch good for five. It's third down. I don't think it's a surprise they're throwing the football early. We expected that. They told us they were going to come out firing, but four for four on the opening drive. They like that. <laughs> they don't just like it. They love it because now everyone gets locked in. Your confidence jumps up. Everyone's easy about what they're doing out there. And by the way, they're looking at the sideline thinking themselves and expressing, let's keep throwing it. We're doing pretty well. Wentz going to try and throw on third. This is caught. He didn't get the touchdown, but he did get the first down as he's tackled at the one. And in a lot of ways, that catch is expected. Red zone presence, and that one was realized there. You've got to find your tight end in that situation. First and goal, a chance for an early statement here on the road. They'll look to run with Taylor, and he is met quickly in the backfield. Down he goes, folded like a lawn chair. It's a loss of a yard there, and it's second down. Again, it'll be Taylor. And he takes this one in for a Colts touchdown. Jonathan Taylor taking it in from two yards out. And the Colts take it right down and score on the opening drive. Extra point by Blankenship is up and good. And that makes the score 7-0. Sanchez now, he'll kick it away following the touchdown. And no effort to bring this one out, it's a touchback. Mayfield going to lead the Browns up now, first and 10 at their own 25-yard line. First carry for Nick Chubb, and nothing much materializing there on the first down run. He'll get a couple, and that's it. Well, it's time for them to be good teammates right here, and what I mean by that is possess the ball for a little while, get at least two first downs, give their defense a chance to settle down a little bit after they give up a touchdown. The last run good for two. Here's second and eight. Mayfield hands it off to Chubb. And he powers his way up past the 30. Four yards on the pickup there as it'll leave him with a third and about four more for first. If you're a football guy, that's a pretty run because everyone is in sync right there. Obviously, the guy carrying the ball, but how about the people up front? Leverage, athleticism, they created some nice space for him. To throw, Mayfield. Swings this out for Hunt. And they bring him to the ground just shy of midfield. I know at the end of games, coaches always tell us that no one play, won or lost a game. This seems pretty important early, doesn't it? Their, their ability to pick up that first down on third down, I thought that was key. Well, you're already in the hole after the touchdown on the other side. How will you respond? We talk about that a lot, and they responded pretty well there. You go three and out, I think you give up a lot of momentum. You get down two scores, could be an entirely different game. So they've got a nice drive going now. They're in good shape. What's interesting to me is they're also in that spot of the field where you would take a shot. Do you change that up just because you're down a touchdown? Working with second and five now. Throwing Mayfield. Flushed out right. And he'll go down inside the 45 before going out of bounds. They'll wind up with positive yardage. It's a gain of three, but now it's third down. They'll run for it. Here's Chubb. And he will have a first down here at about the 40. 
Well, partner, what do you think? Might have been four down territory if they didn't pick it up, but... Yeah, it's a moot point now. I was curious, so if they didn't get it there, would they have gone for it? I guess we'll never know. Yeah, we didn't have to make that call, but I have a feeling both of us would have said, go for it. Field on first down. The Colts are going to get him. Down he goes. It looks like a 12-yard loss there on the first down sack. That huge loss on the sack makes this job much more difficult. It's now second down and 22 yards to go. Now Mayfield. Got a man. That's Rashard Higgins. That was yardage that they needed there after the sack on first down. They didn't get all of it back, but now they look at third down as a manageable situation, one that they have a much better chance of picking up. So two of two on third down conversions on this drive, and now they face a third and three here. Mayfield looks to throw. Pressure comes and down goes Baker Mayfield. Looks like a nine-yard loss, and it also brings up four. are going to take over with a football. The Colts come to the line ready to start their next drive. They have to be thrilled with that first drive. They got them the touchdown. Now they'll be looking to make it a two-score. Under a heavy rush and down he goes. Malik McDowell able to drop him for a loss of four from his defensive tackle spot. Second and 14. Another try after the first down sack. Wentz. In a double coverage and it's intercepted. Troy Hill picks it. And they'll set up shop in enemy territory at the 45-yard line. So that time the pressure got home just as he was releasing the football and caused the pick. And what it did was it disrupted that fragile balance of the mechanics of throwing the football. You know, from the footwork to being able to actually throw it downfield. If one piece of that puzzle gets disrupted, it affects the entire chance of success. Pretty solid run here on first down. Almost picked up another first, but he appears to be a few inches short. And before the second down play, we'll get a whistle, a signal, and a timeout. They'll have two remaining as we step aside here in this second quarter. Second down, here's Chubb again. And he'll go down at the 28. Two minutes on the clock, second quarter, 7-0 ball game. Mind you, in just a couple of minutes, we'll get you to Orlando and our good friend Jonathan Coachman. Coach will run through some of the numbers and the next-gen stats from this first half of foot. Now Mayfield lost the football. Much like a running back going through the line, quarterbacks have to be aware of protecting the football as well. He left it exposed that time, wound up having it knocked free, but fortunately had an alert teammate who was able to get it. Now the Browns signal for the second of their timeouts as they'll head to the sideline and talk over what to do next. Hey. 
So they keep the ball, but work to do on second and long. Mayfield down. And he'll be brought down by the Colts. That winds up pushing him back 11 yards on the sack. And that'll bring up third. Mayfield in this Browns offense staring at a third and long now after the sack. Mayfield. Nowhere to go here. He lost the football. Offensively lucky they're able to keep the football, but now fourth down, so they'll have to boot it away. I do think, though, they're going to look at this as a positive. One, they recovered the fumble, so they retained possession. But two, being able to punt it changes field position for them. Imagine if that turnover takes place there. Now your defense has to go onto the field and try and hold. Instead, they get a little breathing room. You rarely call your punter a weapon, but he certainly was there. How about that? Pinning him down at the one-yard line and helping out the defense in a big way. I'm telling you what, if I'm a defensive coordinator, I might be thinking safety right now. The Colts come to the line, ready to start their next drive. A carry by Taylor to start the drive. And he will forge his way forward only up to the two-yard line. Credit him with a one-yard gain there to make it second and nine. Well, he got what he could there, just trying to move forward and, and gain a little bit of yardage and create some space. You know the pressure is going to be tough defensively. Second down, another run with Taylor. And he'll just keep two hands on the football as he'll be taken down after a short pickup. The Browns will quickly use their third and final timeout as they stop it with 16 seconds to go in half number one. Facing the prospect of a punt from their own end zone. They need some cushion. Let's see what they can do on third down. Wentz going to give this to Taylor. And they're able to corral him right around the eight. And that's short of the first down. It's a gain of five on the play. And it'll bring up a fourth down. First half in the books. You're watching the NFL on EA Sports. And we welcome you back now alongside Charles Davis. I'm Brandon Gordon getting set for quarter number three here. The Browns going to see the football first, but they trail here as we resume play on EA Sports. No run back here to begin the half, and we will start at the 25-yard line. The Browns drive about to get started. It's been a tight game to this point. What do they need to do, Charles, to break through in the second half and take the lead? Well, I think the first thing they need to do is thank their defense for keeping them in this game. And you know, I think the defense is saying back to them, why don't you guys focus on getting some first downs, put some drives together, give us a little bit of a break here. If we can get some rest, we'll play even better for you. And oh, by the way, pay off a few of those drives with some points, too. Officially nothing on that last run. They'll try again second and ten. Here's Mayfield. Looking left side, that's caught by Landry. And from the 25, they work this to the 29, a gain of four. For the Colts, an extra defensive back in there now on third down. He'll drop to throw. That's into the hands of Donovan Peoples-Jones. And he is going to have a Browns first down as they're able to get the third down conversion. This offense is starting to get into rhythm. A nice quick throw there on target. Able to pick up another first down. Line of scrimmage, the 37 on first and 10. He'll look to throw. And he's got his man on the crossing route. That's Landry. And able to get this one across the 45 before he's brought down. 
couple of first downs right in succession, and this is an offense that can really use a good drive, and they're off to a fast start here. Two first downs have them up near midfield now on first and ten. A give. This is Chubb. And he'll take this ahead for about four. Second down coming up. Well, the end of all that hitting and hollering, it was a four-yard run, so the offense is going to go back to that. feel pretty good about themselves. Defensively, you have to feel okay because you didn't let it turn into a bigger run, but the goal, shut it down for two yards or less. That's when you start to feel good about yourselves. The Colts are going to get him. Down he goes. Quitty Pay in there to get him. And that is the sixth time that they have sacked him tonight. Mayfield and this Browns offense staring at a third and long now after the sack. Working out of the gun, Mayfield. And it's hauled in by Austin Hooper. And he is going to have a Browns first down as they're able to get the third down conversion. I don't know what they talked about at halftime. Whatever it was, it worked. They looked like a different team here in the third quarter. Yeah, I doubt that there are very many trash cans that got kicked over that type of a speech. I think what they did was they analyzed what worked in the first half, what didn't, and figured out a better game plan. A first carry now for Kareem Hunt. And he gets this to the 35. Good for a gain of five. That's a strong pickup right there on first down. And as this drive goes on, we're seeing an offensive line and running game imposing its will. After the pickup of five, here's second and five. They'll run again with Hunt. They give him about four on the play, but he's marked short, so it'll be third and about the length of the football. Typically, we think it's the strong safeties that are better tacklers, especially closer to the line of scrimmage amidst traffic. But in this case, how about the free safety coming up and making the big-time play? On third down, it's Nick Chubb. And he's able to pick up the first before he's taken down at the 27. Brandon, what were they thinking on defense there? They looked like they were playing for the pass. That was third and short. Yeah, it was an easy pickup because they handed it to him. That was way too easy. Just looked like absolute confusion defensively. Not sure why they were in that set. Yeah, I'd say you ought to have a few men in the box there. Play fake. Mayfield. This is the tight end to Joku. And he is out of bounds right around the 10-yard line. I tell you what, this offense is playing a little bit of keep away right now. They've come out here in the third quarter, possessed the ball for quite a while, and they keep on converting. Nice pitch and catch there to set up the first and goal. They'll run with Chubb. And a nice pick up there as he'll take it from the 10 down to the 5-yard line. So that run gets him about halfway home. Yes, yeah, now second and goal. The end zone beckons. It looms. They can do whatever they want. Full playbook. Run it again, or they can go play action and try to put it in that way. And the ball smack dab on the five-yard line. Here's second and goal. They'll try again with Chubb. And he's going to get him about three yards closer. He's down to about the two. Two straight shots on the ground. Now on third, do you go to the air? I think the possibility exists, and if you're doing it, you're probably going to play action since you ran it twice. But I often think that second down is a time you go play action and throw the ball. I say commit to the run and think about it being four down territory. They'll give it to Chubb, and he's in. Touchdown, Browns. Nick Chubb taking it in from two yards out. And the Browns have a chance to tie the ball game here in the final minute of the third. The extra point by McLaughlin is up and good. And that will tie our game here in the third. 
So a tie ball game here as the kick's away. Rodgers going to return it from his end zone. The drive will start at the 25-yard line here as Rodgers will not return it. The Colts come to the line ready to start their next drive. Their halftime lead now evaporated. We're back to level following that touchdown a moment ago. And that shouldn't change the mindset a whole lot from an offensive perspective because they already knew this was going to be a hard-fought game. Now they just need to go out, execute their game plan, and keep moving. Watching the NFL on EA Sports. Ball at the 24 and a second and 11. On play action, it's Wentz. And he takes a shot on the release as this will be incomplete. Well, that's where this Cleveland crowd, the dog pound in particular, make it difficult on opposing offenses. It looked like they might have had troubles communicating at the line, and it leads to the incompletion. An incomplete pass on that last play, and that means they'll need to come up with something here on third down. From the gun, it's Wins. And this is going to be intercepted. Picked up by Jeremiah owusu koromoa And a terrific return there. They're finally able to corral him down near the 11-yard line. But we say it often, Charles, but not all interceptions are created equally. And that is a big one here in a tie ball game of the fourth quarter. And Brandon, when games are this close, it usually comes down to the team making the fewest mistakes. And that was one of our mantras back at Tennessee. Coach Major say all the time, the team making the fewest mistakes will win. You've got to cut those down to give yourself an opportunity. On first down, they'll run with Chubb. And he can't quite get there. Tackled down at the one. 60 yards rushing for him now as he's carried it 13 times. Absolutely love the run right there. This guy's known for his quickness, but also for his speed. He's able to get to the second level almost before you blink if you give him any type of blocking. Always talk about slot receivers. And they're usually known as quicker than fast. In this case, we've got a guy who's quick and fast, and he used it to great advantage. A field goal could get him the lead, but it might not be enough here as they come up on first and goal. Chubb is not going to get in. In fact, he'll lose a couple of yards back to the three. That's going to go as a loss of a yard, and it'll be second down. They toss it left side to Chubb, and he goes backwards on this one, losing yardage to the seven. That's going to go down as a loss of five, and it brings up third down. That's a really alert defense there because they saw the heavy look come in from the offense, countered it with extra linebackers who brought a little bit of speed and heft and able to really make a big-time play for their defense. Now they'd really like to make the short field pay off. We'll see if they can, but this is third and goal. Back to throw. They set up the screen to Chubb, and this play doesn't go anywhere. Backwards, losing yardage to the 11. They'll wind up losing three here on the play, and that's going to make it fourth down. And his kick is good. And they take the lead here now at 10-7. Well, he was a spectator for much of this game. This is his first field goal opportunity of the entire contest, but he's able to connect. Yeah, he had a pretty good seat to this one, didn't he? But let's face it, 
all kickers that you and I know, they want to contribute. They want their opportunity, and he seized his. The Colts come to the line ready to start their next drive. And now they find themselves trailing following the field goal. Still a good amount of time in this fourth quarter, but this drive very well could determine the outcome of this ball game. And this is going to be a Colts first down as he's able to get this up to the 37-yard line. We'll definitely see some open running lanes, and he's taking advantage of it right now, but that shouldn't be a surprise. Defense has the lead. They're playing for the pass first. Now Taylor, and he'll lose yardage on the play back at the 37-yard line. He'll lose a yard there, and it's second and 11. There's no question that coming into this game, this defense is pretty vocal about his desire to take this running back out of his game, and all that pregame wolfing has turned into results. On second and 11 now, Wentz out to his left. And he will slide down with a good game. And give him 10 that time as he was able to get away from the pressure and get a nice game. Partner, he was going through his progressions. Not there, not there. After about the third one, he decided he better pull it down and run for it. And he slides down and avoids the hit for good measure. The battle in the trench is never more important than right now. This is third and inches. They're going to run this with a tight end. And he will have the first down as he's brought down up near midfield. Three points separating these two sides with two minutes left to go in the fourth. To the Colts in possession of the football as we get you reset. They come up on a first and ten, desperately needing a score here on what could be their final drive. And he's going to be out of bounds, but not before he takes it inside the 40. And here we are in the fourth quarter, partner, and we watch him drive for what would be a go-ahead touchdown. And you and I both know this is where you need a quarterback who can keep his cool back there, not just for himself, but to keep the rest of the team relaxed too. So here's a first and 10 at the 38. To throw is Wentz. Finds his big tight end, Mo Alley Cox. A gain of six there on first. That completion helps out in a nice way. Now they can take a little bit more time, but guess what? They got to make sure on their throws that they see it open, not just anticipate it. On second down now, it's Taylor. And he got half of what he needed there, two yards, and it'll bring up a third and two more. I like the call there because that was one to take time off the clock and get them closer to getting out of here with a W. In the mind of the play caller, all you want to hear is tick, tick, tick. And if you're thinking field goal from here, it's 48 yards. I think they'd like to get him a little help now on third down and move it closer. And he's able to pick up the first down here before he goes down at the 26. Okay, there's three timeouts left, right? Think you got to use one here, don't no you? No doubt about it. I'd use one right here. Back to throw. Wins. And he'll get nothing out of that one. So he'll be stopped here for no gain. And it'll be second and ten. Not good. They didn't move the football an inch. And precious time ticking off the clock. The Colts going to use the first of their timeouts. As they'll stop it with 40 seconds remaining in this fourth quarter. Quick throw into the hands of Pittman. 
Nine yards, and that leaves him just short, so it'll be third and less than a yard. I tell you, it has not been his best day throwing the football. He really needs to piece something together here. All will be forgiven if he leads him into the end zone. On Wentz is intercepted yet again. Picked off by Anthony Walker. And the Browns have just about shown up this football game. Just when you thought this game might be turned on its ear, a late interception pretty much going to seal the deal. Yeah, boy, talk about having your backs to the wall. This defense, they look like they were in danger of surrendering this lead, but they knew they needed that one play, and they got it right there, partner. Down to a knee here. The defense still with a couple of timeouts. We'll see if they want to use them. Well, Charles, the old saying, the old cliche, if you want points at a premium, that's certainly applied here in Denver. That almost got the cover time capsule, didn't it? Old school football, low scoring, close game. What a way to finish it up. You loved it, didn't you? You I loved did. the defense. I certainly did. Brought back the images of the game of old.